I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, we're going to look at some basic setup tips and tricks for the FM9. I'm going to be using a combination of the physical hardware and the front panel on the FM9 and then FM9 Edit. All the features that you see me demonstrate here can be accessed from the hardware if you like. It is simply a little bit easier to take a screen capture of FM9 Edit for me than it is to film certain features on the FM9. But we'll start on the front panel with some very basic setup tips and tricks, including how to set the global settings and the input and output. And then we'll take a look at a few more features that I personally always go to when I set up a new fractal device. Let's go. To get started, we want to set up the FM9 for the playback system that we're using. So I want you to ask yourself, am I playing through full range monitors, a solid state power amp and guitar cabinet, or a tube amp and a guitar cabinet primarily. These decisions are gonna help us tailor the settings in the global settings here. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna press the E encoder and go to the setup menu. We're then gonna navigate down to global settings and hit enter on the front panel. We can come down to this modeling section here where you can see you've got power amp modeling, cabinet modeling, tone control display, update pre three presets and speaker impedance curve. I want you to ignore the last three settings there and we're gonna focus on power amp modeling and cabinet modeling. So if you wanted to audition the factory presets and you're playing through some studio monitors or an FR, FR system, you don't actually have to do anything right here. Just leave this, leave power amp modeling on, leave cabinet modeling on. If you were gonna be playing through a solid state power amp and a guitar cabinet, well, we don't want cabinet modeling on. We don't want the sound of a mic'd guitar cabinet being amplified through a guitar cabinet again. So we can disable this globally. You of course have the ability in each preset to bypass the cab block. But again, if we're just getting started, you probably just wanna rip into the factory presets to get started. So I would bypass that. And then if you were playing through a tube amp of some sort, you may wanna consider turning power amp modeling off. But that one depends on the type of amp you're using. You know, if you're using an old Plexi model or a Fender model, those amps generate a lot of their character through the power amp section. So you can bypass this one globally. I'm playing through some full range monitors, so I'm not gonna play around with either of those there. The tone control display, you can set as authentic. So for example, if you open up an amp model of an amp that originally only has a single tone knob, that will be displayed there when you've got the authentic tone control display there. Alternatively, you can have access to all the advanced parameters for every single amp by setting the tone control to ideal. We've also got options if we move down for effect mixing. So you can set up spillover between presets for your reverb and delay trails. You can also offset the global reverb and effects mix as well as the noise gate. I generally leave those alone, but one very important parameter is right down at the bottom, the AC line frequency. This can be set to 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz. For example, if you're in the United States, you wanna leave this at 60 Hertz. But for me in Australia, our AC power coming out of the wall runs at 50 Hertz. Setting it here will help calibrate the global noise gate on here. And that would just mean you get less hum, which is what we want. So that would be step one in here. You've also got a bunch of other parameters you can come in here, for example, setting up prompt on an edited preset. So if you edit a preset and you accidentally change to a new preset, you can actually have a warning message come up and say, hey, do you wanna do this? I normally leave that one off and then indicate edited on scene change means that if you've got a preset and all you've done is change scenes on it, it won't give you a little edited light over here. So again, I just set both of those off. You can set the display offset for presets. For example, if you would rather see number one instead of number zero as your first preset that is in there. Okay, let's move along. We'll hit exit and we'll go to IO. This is the next important set of parameters to tweak. Very straightforward. You can see here, AD sensitivity. This is gonna help us optimize the analog to digital converter in here and give us the best signal to noise ratio. It's not a gain control. It's not gonna make your guitar any louder or quieter. All you have to do is get the guitar that you play with the highest output pickups, crank everything up, and then just clank away on it with some open chords. <laughs> You can see there that I was hitting that red LED quite frequently when I was strumming. So I'm gonna turn this down to the point where 
If I just play some open chords and I'm not bashing away at maximum intensity, I'm not going to get the red input LED. But when I really do play hard, it's just going to tickle the red. <laughs> do 20% works pretty good for my loudest guitar which is the PRS that I'm playing at the moment which you can't see but again this is not a gain control and red does not mean that your input is clipping it just indicates 6 dB of headroom so this is going to optimize the AD converter for each input if you do want to compensate quickly between different guitars you can use the input one gain control for example if I'm playing my PRS and I want to quickly audition a bunch of presets with my Strat, I could adjust this to give me a flat gain control globally across all my presets. Next, let's take a look at the audio setup page. This gives us a lot of flexibility with our audio outputs and general routing. You can set each input to either take an analog or a digital input source on the FM9. And down here, you can set that digital input source to either be the SPDIF inputs on the hardware or to be USB. I mean, for most of us, we're gonna plug our guitar into input number one. So we wanna use the analog input, but we could set input two or input three to be digital inputs. And for example, connect an external effects processor that has a digital output or to implement say VSTs with our main guitar tone on here. That is a really powerful way to set up your FM9. For now, I'm gonna leave them all as analog input sources. Input two and input three can also be set up as stereo or mono inputs if you wanna do that. Now, the output configuration is very powerful over here and you can set the phase and the output level. We've got two choices for output level, basically line and instrument level, depending on your setup. For me, I normally run straight into a full range system or a PA. So I leave this at plus four and I leave the phase normal. This is really the only part of my rig, so the phase is totally cool, but the output mode here is gonna offer you a lot of flexibility. For example, I'm playing in stereo at the moment and I've got this glorious sounding multi-tap delay in stereo, check it out. <laughs> However, for a lot of shows that I do, a lot of the time the sound engineer will only require a mono output. So I can set this output mode to be a variety of different mono modes. My preferred method is to use some left and right. What this means is it will just collapse the stereo outputs down to mono. <laughs> You can even choose to mute the output if you wanted to use your FM9 as an interface, again, with external plugins, or simply copy the left output to the right output. But I'm gonna stay in stereo with my system at the moment. I often use the SPDIF outputs with my FM9, FM3, or Axe FX3, but I want that signal to be exactly the same as what I would normally put out of output one. So I set this to output one as the SPDIF AES output source over here. You've got multiple options if you normally use output two, or you wanna have it run through USB channel seven and eight, or you actually just wanna cut a clean DI, then you can set it to input one. That is really, really powerful. Furthermore, you've got the ability over here to have global EQs, but you have to come to the config and enable those over here. So I generally use a parametric EQ block in all of my presets, but there are often situations where you might not have the time to tweak that across multiple presets. So you could set say the EQ type for output one to be a graphic or a parametric EQ. And when you navigate over here, you can come in and tweak this. For example, if you're playing through a system that has a lot of 4K in it, you could dip that down really, really quickly. Alternatively, we could use the config and set it as a parametric EQ. So when we go to any of these outputs, we've got these parametric EQs in here that we can tweak globally across the board. Like I said, I normally do all of these things in a single preset with a parametric EQ block. So I tend to turn them off, but that is a great utility feature. I haven't talked about it yet, but a really important little control over here that will optimize the noise gate that is built into all of the inputs here is the AC line frequency. So I'm in Australia, our AC line frequency, meaning the frequency that the power coming out of the wall runs at is 50 Hertz. If you're in the United States, for example, you want to set that 
to 60 hertz. So that's another really quick one that is really important. Let's exit from the IO setup and come over to the FC controllers and onboard switches. I'm gonna navigate all the way to the right because you actually have two different sets of factory layouts to choose between. You've got the default layouts and then you've got these OFM 9G foot switch layouts which behave very similar to the way you might set up an FM3 and an FC6. I would encourage you to play around with both of those straight out of the box. I tend to enjoy the latter, but I know pro but I know plenty of people enjoy the former. Let's page back to config because there are some important customizable controls over here to get the most out of your FM9. You can set the bank size for your presets if you use the preset layouts on here. You can also set a limit. For example, if you only use say two banks of presets for a particular gig, you can kick in a bank switching limit so you will never overshoot and get lost with your presets. You've got this MLM switch combo, which basically means if you press the far right two foot switches in a particular order, and this is spelled out in the manual, you can get access to your master layout menu. That's enabled, that's totally fine out of the box. One that I like to use is the hold function timeout. So if you have a function assigned to a foot switch as a tap and then a hold, you can set this to automatically release. Say you press and hold the foot switch, then half a second later, your hold function is gonna be activated. So you can set that in there and you can also set the hold function mode over here. So you have two options. One is automatic. That means that if you've got the hold function timeout set for half a second, after half a second, the hold function is gonna activate. What I like though, is the switch up method there. This means that say, I'm gonna play a guitar solo and I have a hold function on a particular button that is gonna kick in a lead boost. That means I can press and hold that in anticipation of playing and releasing the switch there. And then I can perfectly time it by just releasing my foot from there and the hold function will activate. So. I like that one on there. You can also set up the per preset overrides in there and a bunch of other functions on here. So you can see things like the FC main display if you've got an FC controller connected over here. You can also set the intensity of the mini displays and the rings and you can invert the mini displays as well if that's something that you wanna do. For example, if you're playing on a really bright stage outdoors, that is probably a pretty handy one. And then you've got your control switch links, which I wouldn't worry too much about at the moment. You've also got the drop down menus here, like the tools menu, which will let you access the built in fractal bot for updating firmware. You can manage your presets, load user cabs with manage cabs, access the tuner settings. And one that I find very, very handy is this preset leveling tool, which I'll just drag over. My method for internally leveling a preset is very straightforward. I'm just gonna grab my main scene that I play on the most. I'm gonna aim to have it hitting around at zero dB like this. <laughs> Now, if that is too low or too high, you can instantly access the amp one or amp two level on here, as well as the output level for the overall output block here, and just simply bring it up or down and then hit save. This is a fantastic tool to leave open if you need to level multiple presets for a gig or session. Let's quickly set up an expression pedal. The most important aspect of this, aside from having an expression pedal like this Fractal EV1, is having the right cable. You need a cable with a tip, ring, and sleeve. The easy giveaway is that you will see two dark bands on your cable. Then we're gonna take this cable, and in this instant, if you look at the back, there is the pedal one jack. I'm gonna plug that into the pedal one jack on here, again, with this TRS cable. It is under the headphone output. Uh, I have done this several times where I've actually plugged into the headphone output instead and wondered why my expression pedal wasn't working. So be very, very careful to check that you've actually plugged it in to the right output. Next, let's hit setup again. We're gonna navigate down to IO and we will move across to the pedal settings. Remember, I've got pedal jack number one connected. I've got the type set as expression. Then I'm gonna come down here and press enter. So the first thing that I wanna do is to go to the heel down position on here. So I move my expression pedal all the way down and you will see that I'm at the bottom of the range of motion. Let me turn this around and then I'll go toe down and that will track to the top end of the range of motion. Then I hit enter and I'm done. My expression pedal is ready to use. Now the FM9 is an incredibly powerful, 
and flexible beast that is very deep and it requires some learning. So on top of all of this, I would highly encourage you read through the quick start guide and the user manual. And there's also a user manage wiki at wiki.fractalaudio.com that I would recommend going through if you wanna learn some really, really cool tips and tricks. Shout out to the one and only Alex who does a lot of work managing the wiki and to everybody who put together the user manual because it is such an amazing resource. And I would recommend that you kind of start very simple with the FM9, explore the factory presets, and then start by creating some of your own presets that just say use an amp, a cab, a delay, and a reverb, and get to slowly learn all the effect types. There are no shortcuts learning a new device with this, but the payoff is that you get so much versatility and so much of a chance to customize your presets and to really find your own sound with the FM9 or the FM3 and Axe FX3, which at the end of the day is what it's all about. I hope you find these little setup tips and tricks handy, and I hope you'll learn something. If there's something I missed, feel free to let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you all next Tuesday for another Tone Tip. See you then.